Uh, what I might quickly do is load one of my old games from like one from a playthrough that I didn't stream. Is he perhaps don't die for these fish? Um, probably this one. So, like, you can see we've explored the whole complex this playthrough. Do we know where it is? Oh, okay. So here's the room. Just so that you can see it. And there's the brain. Um, and the exploding thing is just these consoles. These are actually UFO navigation consoles that are reused. Um, you can see all the chairs, you can see the lifts, like the entrance in. Oh, in this playthrough I used heavy lasers. That's interesting. Did you use them on everyone? Did. Interesting. Well, in any case, this is the room. Nothing special, like I said. Um, one other thing I'll do is... Uh, the alien stuff we didn't get to finish researching. I'll just quickly go over that. So... Let's start with fusion launchers, fusion ball launchers. Uh, that's a craft weapon. Uh, unless I didn't finish the research here either, that would be funny. <laughs> we didn't finish it here. Okay, never mind. Basically, fusion ball launcher kind of sucks. Plasma beam is still the best weapon in the game for for craft. Fusion ball launcher does way more damage from, I think, slightly more range, but the range is irrelevant, it doesn't make any difference. Um, because the threshold for when the enemy UFOs can shoot you, it doesn't have enough range to outrange the, the, anything that the Pleasant Beam can't already outrange. It has more range, but the range doesn't matter. Um, if I was a few big shots, kind of like uh, an avalanche missile, for those of you who were at the start of the playthrough, it's a bit like that. Um, except it's a lot more powerful. What else? Weapons and equipment. Uh, I think we got everything there, except for like, you know, plasma rifles and that sort of thing. Here's the uh, fusion torch I was talking about. So it's a uh, 500 damage, so it goes through everything in the game. Um, and it's just, you know, used for opening up the sides of your bows and stuff. Um, what else? Alright, the aliens which we didn't uncover... I haven't researched in this game. Well, okay. I'll see if I can load up a different game. I might not have one. Yeah, this is my only playthrough. These two. So unfortunately I, I can't show you what the those two weird critters we saw in there was. I can show you the muton. So it's the green dudes. This humanoid creature is physically powerful and intelligent. They have a particular appetite for consuming raw flesh of any kind which they need for sustenance like earth-based carnivores. They appear to rely on telepathic commands from a race known as ethereals. Once separated from this telepathic link their mental system appears to break down and they die. The cybernetic implants are used to enhance their combat performance, they are clearly the full soldiers for a higher intelligence. And if you do an autopsy, for some reason they turn purple, I guess you take off their green skin stuff. I don't know. The skin of this creature appears to be an organically created protective armor which is grafted onto the body. There are numerous cybernetic implants which are used to enhance the cardiovascular system and the senses. The reproductive organs appear to have been surgically removed, which is, you know, a good time. Evidently, these unfortunate creatures are limited to a life of warfare and conquest. Armor-piercing ammunition is not very effective against their toughened skin. I don't know if this line is true or not. And even if it is, it doesn't really matter. Because no one uses armor-piercing rounds against mutons. That would be suicidal. The only armor-piercing weapons in the game are conventional weapons, and conventional weapons do almost no damage compared to late-game weapons. Like, laser rifles are already really weak compared to late-game weapons. Uh, again, I'm mostly using them for a combination of difficulty reasons, because it's too easy if you use the best stuff in the game, and 
convenient because if you equip low size strength people with laser rifles, as you saw in the playthrough just then, they don't kill everyone, which is real convenient. Um, what else? Base facilities? I don't think we really missed anything. Uh, we never did construct defenses, but the way defenses work is you need. I think it's something along the lines of you need enough defense value times the hit ratio to shoot down the UFO outright. Like, if you have. If you invade a bad battleship and the only UFO that ever invades your base is a battleship, then if you do 90% of its health, it doesn't matter. You need to destroy the entire thing for it to count. So that's why, like, these defense systems are pretty useless. Uh, mind shields we never really used either. Basically, it just makes it harder for you to be detected. As the uh, description sort of says. Uh, I think that's... I think that's about it. The components. We finished food. I don't remember if we finished entertainment. I think maybe we did. So I won't go over that one. Surgery. In its surgery, this surgical equipment uses laser cutters to extract certain body parts from cattle and other animals. No, I think we did this one as well. But there you go. Examination room. Okay, we didn't get to this one. In the past, many thousands of people have claimed to have been abducted by aliens, sometimes repeatedly. And this picture is like great. He's just like pulling some plasma... Pulling? Putting some plasma sword thing into this guy's head. Well, he or she is just naked. <laughs> I don't really. It's a weird picture. The truth is far more horrific. Humans are abducted, researched, and monitored. The best specimens have genetic material extracted. Women have human-alien hybrid fetuses implanted and then removed several months later. Who knows what sinister motives the aliens have? And this question mark is, like, really big for some reason. It, like, it doesn't line up with the rest of the text. It's one pixel too tall. But yes, you would think people who have had human-alien hybrid fetuses implanted into them might notice that and might go to a doctor and say like yo doc I have an alien inside of me what's up with that but no they don't there's reasons uh any research oh these aren't very interesting it just it just tells you what the missions are so if you don't want to read that you can pause it on the um youtube upload or we can just look it up on uh ufopedia.org if you just like Google that, it should be the first result. Um, so there's the XCOM wiki as well, but the XCOM wiki mostly focuses on the new XCOM games. Um, UFOpedia was around before the wiki was really either existed or was popular, I don't know which. And UFOpedia mostly focuses, from my experience, it mostly focuses on the older games. So if you want information about this game, like in-game information about this game, that's a great place to go. Um, it'll go over some strategy as well, which, you know, can help you if you're having trouble or if you want to try and figure out a specific thing out. Um, like, you saw how I did uh, the for profit manufacturing towards the end of the game. It'll help you out with figuring out how to do that if that's something you're interested in doing. Um, It'll help you out with base layouts as well. Um, so if you're interested in playing the game, you can buy it on Steam or GOG or uh, I don't know where else. You'd have to look it up. If you are in most countries, it should be available on both GOG as in GOG.com and that'll be DRM free as well. And it should also be available on Steam. It's not super pricey. Um, and then when you've bought the game, just get Open XCOM, which is a fan-made uh, sort of remaster, but they haven't updated graphics and stuff. A remaster it fixes bugs. It gives you shit ton more options. It's basically if the game was released today with the same 
general gist, you would expect it to have all of the open XCOM stuff already in it. That sort of thing. Uh, mostly it just fixes bugs and stuff that shouldn't happen. It lets you use mods. Um, and you saw me use a few mods, like the Retaliator, that's actually a mod. Uh, a good mod in my opinion, one that makes a lot of sense. But yeah, that's a mod. Um, if you want to know how to make it work, it's probably on the site somewhere, um, under the mod section or something. I, I haven't installed mods for like four years, but uh, there you go. That is the end of the game. That's that's really all I have to say about it. It's it's pretty good. I I think it's a lot better if you play through it just once or twice. If you play through more than three or four times, it starts to become really repetitive. You saw at the end of this playthrough, I just I was pretty done with the game because it wasn't challenging anymore. It was just tedious. Uh, it wasn't that interesting until we got to the end mission where the game crashed. That was interesting. That was a challenge. <laughs> trying to end the game without crashing the game. But uh, yeah, uh, I'll be signing off now. So the one person watching, thanks for dropping by. Um, the next game I'll be going through, I'm thinking at this stage, will probably be MechWarrior 4 Vengeance if I can get it to pick up an OBS properly. And then after Vengeance, I'll probably play Black Knight and then maybe Mercenaries. Um, because MechWarrior 5 is coming out soon, and I also will be getting a new com well, a few new computer parts in a few months, and I want to get a new Windows installation on there, and I probably won't have all of these old games on the new system once it's all put together and installed and all of that, so I want to get through MechWarrior 4, Vengeance, Black Knight, and Mercenaries before I uh, upgrade, so that I can, you know, get the get the recordings done, put them on YouTube, stream them, all of that jazz, and then like, in case they don't work on Windows 10 nicely, or in case I just can't get them to work, then I don't have to worry about them because I would have already played them again, and it's all recorded for you guys. After Macquarie. I might play the updated XCOM. I'm not that interested in Terror from the Deep. I've never played it, to be honest, but I'm not that interested in it either. Uh, Terror from the Deep is the sequel to, to the original XCOM. It was made just, I think, one year later it was released. It uses the same engine. The gameplay is almost identical, except it's it all takes place underwater. So yeah, things are slightly different, but for the most part the game is almost a glorified skin. A few mechanics are different but most of the game is the same just in a different looking environment. So not that appealing for me because <laughs> I've already played this game as much as I probably want to play it for the next, at least for the next few years. Maybe in a few years I'll change my mind but yeah there you go. That's the plan for streaming. That's Open XCOM or uh, UFO Defense or XCOM Enemy Unknown. It went by different names depending on the region. That's the game, that's the stream plans. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys another time.